Ready, set, go. Love God, love others. Jesus' life on earth showed us what God is like. Jesus lived a perfect life filled with love, and his love helped people know God more. And did you know Jesus gave his followers a special mission before he left earth? He did. Jesus told them to love God, to tell everyone about God, and to share his love with the whole world. That's a big mission. Big missions need lots of help, and Jesus knew that. So he gave his followers a helper, the Holy Spirit. We also have the Bible to help us learn about God's big story and Jesus' amazing life filled with love. When you choose to follow Jesus, you get to join in the mission too. You get to help Jesus bring a little bit of heaven to earth. Ready, set, go. Love God, love others. This week, give what you can. Hey everybody, I'm Heather, and I am glad that you joined me today. Can you give me a big wave hello? Wow, how nice and friendly. And hello back to you. I can tell that you're learning to be a friend like Jesus. Are you ready for more? Well, get set to sing to God, practice a verse, and hear a story from the Bible. So let's go. Ready? Set, go. Stand up. Let's move and sing to God.
to see. Five, four, three, two, one. It's time for a true story from the Bible. I love sign language. Can I teach you a sign? It's the sign for the word help. Okay, make a fist and pop that thumb up with one hand. Put your other hand under it and lift it up. Let's do it again. And this time, feel how the hand underneath is helping to lift the other hand. Fist, thumb, hand, help. The Bible tells us to help and give to others. In the book of Matthew, Jesus says, you should do good things to help people, but be careful. Do not do this so that other people will see you, but God will reward you because he sees what you do secretly. The Bible tells us to help people just because we care about them. It's a way that we can go be a friend like Jesus. Before we hear this Bible story, let's pray together. I will say the words out loud and you can listen and say them in your heart. Close your eyes, be still, and let's talk to God. Dear God, help us to learn something new today. Teach us through the words in the Bible. We love you. And everybody said, Amen. Let's watch this story inspired by Matthew, chapter six. The story today is about two kids, Dirk and Ronald, who decide to help their neighbor, Mrs. McGruder. Wait, are those names in the Bible? No, this story is not in the Bible. It's made up, like something that could happen right now in your neighborhood. Watch this. Ronald lived in a neighborhood of neat, well-kept homes. Every yard was perfectly raked. Each front door was freshly painted. Even the pets were all well-groomed and well-behaved. It was a model neighborhood, except of course for Mrs. Magruder's home right across the street from Ronald. Her bushes were mangy, her gutters were stuffed with dead leaves, and her front door was constantly peeling. Ronald's neighbor, Dirk, complained about her every time they met for their evening walks. Her place is an eyesore. Just terrible. Well, maybe her arthritis is too bad for her to take care of things herself. Oh, well, she should pay someone. It's ruining the whole block. Maybe, uh, I don't know, someone should help her? Dirk frowned for a moment. Then he flashed his pearly white teeth in a big grin. That's it. She didn't mow her lawn all summer and hasn't raked her leaves once. I'll spiff up her yard with my brand new Grass Shredder 3000. Oh, everybody will be so impressed. Sure enough, the next Saturday morning when everybody in the neighborhood was outside working or playing, Dirk revved up the sidewalk in his shiny new mower. Ronald watched from his porch swing as Dirk waved to all the neighbors as he zipped across Mrs. Magruder's front lawn, trimming the grass and shredding the dead leaves. Don't mind me, just doing something really nice for Mrs. Magruder. Cause that's how I roll. <laughs> when he finished, the neighbors crowded around. It was like totally the sweetest thing ever. You're quite the gentleman. We're lucky to have you in the neighborhood, young man. So, so thoughtful. Here, take this pumpkin pie I just baked. Ronald stared in fascination. The whole neighborhood was praising Dirk. Yeah. Must be great to have everyone say such nice stuff about you. A few minutes later, Dirk sauntered up Ronald's walk, flaunting the pumpkin pie. Ha <laughs> score! Totally worked. Everyone thinks you're wonderful for helping Mrs. Magruder. Yeah, I got three invitations to dinner and I'll probably get Christmas presents from every neighbor on the block. After Dirk left, Ronald sat staring at Mrs. Magruder's house. I mean, sure, the yard looked great now, but her gutters were still a mess and her door was <laughs> battered. Maybe if I can clean her gutters and fix her doors, everybody will think I'm great too. The next crisp, sunny Saturday morning, Ronald waited until all the neighbors were out raking their leaves. He rummaged in his garage. Now, where's that extension ladder? And I know I've got some leftover red paint from my front door. It's gotta be here somewhere. The paint was nowhere to be found. Maybe it's in the attic. Ronald dug through several dusty old boxes, searching. 
Nope. Uh-uh. No, uh, not this one. Huh. What's this? He pulled out several framed cross-stitch pictures. I remember these. Grandma made them. He went through them, one by one. Each of them showed a picture or a verse, carefully embroidered in colorful thread. <laughs> I remember this one hung in the kitchen. And this one was in her hallway. Ronald moved closer to the dormo window so he could see the last one in better light. It was a Bible verse. When you give to needy people, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Your father will reward you because he sees what you do secretly. Carefully, Ronald peered out the high window. Below, he saw his neighbors at work, the people he wanted to see him working on Mrs. Magruder's house, the people he wanted to praise him for being so helpful. I think maybe I've got it all backward. Still considering, Ronald finally located the leftover paint. Now why did I put it with my old Nintendo games? And took paint and pictures both downstairs. But he didn't go to work on Mrs. Magruder's house. Not yet. The following week, he finally saw his chance. Mrs. Magruder's car pulled out of her driveway loaded with suitcases. She must be going to her daughter's house for the weekend. Early the next morning, before anybody was up, Ronald snuck across the street to Mrs. Magruder's house. He got on his ladder and cleaned the molding leaves out of her gutters. Ugh, there's a whole forest of baby trees growing in here. Then he scraped and painted her front door. There, nice and cheerful. When he was done, it was still early. He packed up and returned to his own home before a single person saw him. No one praised him for what he had done. No one offered him a triple chocolate cake. Later that afternoon, he met up with Dirk as they walked their dogs. Well, 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 somebody really spiffed up Mrs. Magruder's house. Wonder who it was. Huh. Guess some things will always be a mystery. <laughs> Ronald knew that none of his neighbors or even Mrs. Magruder herself would know he'd ever done the work. But he knew, and God knew. And that was enough. So Dirk and Ronald both helped. But which one did it to show love and please God and not to get attention? That's right, Ronald knew Mrs. McGruder needed help and he did it to be a friend like Jesus. Let's think of more ways to help. Hmm. Oh, can you go put your toys away? That's helping. Can you go play with someone who's lonely? That's helping. Can you go to bed? when your grown-ups tell you to? That's helping. Oh, if someone falls down, can you go help them up? Yeah, that's just like the sign for help. Remember, when Jesus was here on earth, he helped people every day, everywhere he went. Jesus is the best friend anyone could ever have. So go be a friend like Jesus. Ready, set, go. Stand up, it's Bible verse time. When we help people, it gives us a chance to tell them the good news about Jesus. Just like our verse says, we've been practicing these words from the Bible for a few weeks, so I think you know it. Watch me do the motions and say the verse if you know it. Jesus said, go and tell everyone the good news. Mark 16, 15. Do you know it? I'll do the motions again and you say the words. Jesus said, wow, teamwork makes the dream work. Thanks for helping me, friends. That was impressive. Now, you've got these words from Jesus in your hearts, and you'll remember that he wants you to go and tell everyone the good news about his love. Ready, set, go. Do you remember what this sign means? That's right, help. When we help, we're being a friend like Jesus. Okay, wait, I have some questions. 
Should we go be a friend like Jesus only on holidays? No! We can be a friend every day. Should we only go be a friend like Jesus to our family? No! We should be a friend to everyone. Should we only go be a friend like Jesus to get a prize or so people will tell us that we're awesome? No, we can always be a friend even if no one notices because God knows. So be a helper and go be a friend like Jesus. Ready, set, go. Let's move and sing to God. Can't hold it in. 